thank you very much, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a few thoughts uh, with you, and I hope your discussions have been productive uh, today. Uh, as you know, I headed the U.S. delegation, and I finished my role at the end of January, and I've had a chance to reflect on the outcomes of the wicket and also give some thought to where do we go from here. And obviously, where we go from here are some of my personal views, but I think you'll find them shared by my colleagues uh, throughout the United States uh, uh, government. So let me just uh, cover a, a few areas uh, of perspective about the wicket, and then I'll get into what I think some of the, the next steps uh, uh, should be for consideration. First of all, the thing I, I would like to say first is the United States, as we looked at the wicket, uh, looked at it in terms of a lot of successes, that it wasn't a failure. Certainly not every aspect did we you know, like to see, but there were quite a few successes that I think it's important to talk about because the issues that we're dealing with on internet freedom, on the advances of the telecommunications industry, are long-term broad issues and require a period of time to, I think, have a full discussion. So what were some of the successes that we saw? First of all, that there were 54 other nations, including the majority of Europe, that I think made a very strong statement about the criticality of Internet freedom, both in terms of human rights and also in terms of economic development. A second success, candidly, is that countries like Russia, China, and the UAE, which favored more state-oriented provisions in the ITRs, were largely unsuccessful in converting the treaty into a vehicle for instituting government control over key aspects of the Internet, both in terms of governance and in terms of operations. A third positive outcome, I feel, is that the ITRs contained a lot of positive language about international telecommunications. And it's interesting, in the coverage of the wicked, you don't hear a lot of these positive aspects but the positive aspects reaffirming the era of private sector investment, the positive aspects and messages about commercial traffic agreements, the positive messages about competition and liberalization, that we think those are very uh, positive uh, elements. Also, another positive outcome is the discussion that we had about the fundamental workings of IP-based networks, about interconnection, about services and content and how they'll evolve in the future. Sometimes I think it's easy to look at an environment in today's terms and we don't look forward to say how is the industry, how is the internet, how is telecommunications going to evolve and are we setting up an environment for success. And then the final positive era, era and outcome I think is the transparency that was added to the ITU deliberations the openness, the transparency, the engagement of civil society and multi-stakeholder groups all in the ITU decision-making process. And again, I feel this is a process that needs to continue, but certainly there were some very positive initial steps. So what were some of the bottom line you know, takeaways? Before I talk about the future, the bottom line takeaways is I think it crystallized at the wicket in Dubai the need to focus on internet infrastructure. I think that message came acro across loud and clear. Broadband access and it, the importance of that access, especially in developing nations. That to me was a clear uh, message and the need to facilitate an acceleration of that broadband and internet access. But I also believe that one of the other key messages uh, from the U.S. and from Europe is a need to remain committed to a free and open Internet, the free flow of information, um, governance that's open and broad-based. And finally, I, I guess a, a bottom line message is that the wicket to us was not a beginning or an end to any discussion, but it was a continuation of a very important dialogue, and this dialogue is going to need to continue. So as we look forward, you know, there's several comments, you know, looking forward. You know, I think the United States is going to need to be very focused on the content and the deliberations going on in a variety of upcoming forum, including the World Telecom Policy Forum in May, including the ITU plenipotentiary that's going to be in 2014, 
including the WISIS Plus 10, which is going to be in 2015. And I think the United States should use these and other conferences for a fresh opportunity to work with Europe with a variety of nations, people that signed and didn't sign the, the Wicked Treaty, to really start fostering a discussion about broadband infrastructure, broadband access, etc. And I think you'll find the United States to be very willing and interested <clears throat> in having that, uh, in having that uh, dialogue. I also think that the arguments about strengthening multi-stakeholder governance are going to be critical to this going forward. So if I were to carve out four or five concrete areas that I think require action near term to intermediate term, they would be the following. Number one, most immediately, is the interpretation of the treaty outcome. Uh, specifically discussing ways that the internet is or is not implicated in the treaty I think needs to be worked out. With that I think characterizing the effect of the newly created operating authorized operating agency term so that it's very clear what organizations are subject to that. To us it, it looks very much like it's public providers of telecommunications but I think gaining confirmation of that will be important. And then finally, addressing the effect of new state-level right of network access in, I, in the ITR preamble, making sure there's clarity about what that means exactly. A second major area I think of issues to look at going forward is on Internet policy and governance. The specific elements there is continuing to foster Internet governance as an issue of mutual concern of allies throughout the region, including with the EU including with NATO. A second piece with that is identifying additional venues and forum for governments and multi-stakeholder organizations to meet and discuss the internet policy issues. Another related area is finding ways for organizations such as the IGF, the Internet Governance Forum, so they can become more widespread in their involvement, engagement, membership, and relevant to all stakeholders. And then a last piece with this issue is continuing to identify best practices that foster access to ICANN, to the Internet Society, to IGF, and other key pillars of the multi-stakeholder governance model. A third major issue going forward I think that should be addressed are cybersecurity issues. With that specifically, identifying the most pressing and disruptive cybersecurity issues in developing nations as well as developed nations. Identifying private sector, multi-stakeholder approaches and entities that address these type of issues and could be more engaged in the future providing assistance broadly. I remember vividly talking to a variety of representatives, of regulators, of communication ministers in developing nations dealing with real cybersecurity issues. We need to find a way to effectively deal with these through a multi-stakeholder model. The next area I think needs a focus intermediate term is on internet access issues and identifying especially with developing nations what type of investment is required. And what I could envision is a global infrastructure 2.0 agenda, as I would call it, that would look at best practices in network sharing, in spectrum allocation and sharing, in universal service programs, in public-private partnerships, and other ways to promote economic activity. I think we feel that is the most sustainable, long-term way to really enhance broadband access. Another related area with this is developing a set of best practices to promote and sustain local level native language content and application generation. I'm very encouraged as I look in my own experience at how the whole internet application environment is being enhanced uh, internationally. Where companies all over the world, whether they be in Kenya, in Jordan, whether they be in Peru and Chile, that are developing local businesses all around the internet that need to be fostered. And working with and partnering with a variety of leading countries and governments on this issue to share best practices. Again, including countries like Kenya, Singapore, and Colombia. Another major area, this is the fifth major area I think that should be worked on is building and renewing ties with international institutions. 
So I believe the United States government should remain actively involved in all three sectors of the ITU, the ITUR, the ITUT, and the ITUD, and all of their working groups so we can foster a healthy working relationship with the current and future ITU leadership. Now, all of these suggestions, I think, are examples of, of how our ideas have, have morphed and evolved since the wicket, and I think require a lot of thinking about how do we best approach these, in what venue, et cetera. But what I would say in conclusion is that, you know, we should remember a lot of the positive outcomes of the wicket. We're in an environment that these sectors are global in nature, and the partnership there is absolutely critical. And a lot of positive outcomes about the importance of liberalization came out. A lot of the worrisome elements about Internet governance were eliminated. And we need to use that to advance discussions. The discussions need to be advanced clearly on multi-stakeholder governance. It needs to be advanced on cybersecurity issues. It needs to be advanced on broadband access. But I do feel that those are the right issues to, uh, to advance. And I think if we're successful in all of this and we focus on a collegial discussion, I do think we'll get success. But let's keep remembering what that future environment uh, looks like to drive success. So again, let me just say a, a very big thank you for including me, especially remotely. I appreciate that opportunity. If there are questions or comments uh, uh, following this, I'd be glad to, uh, to engage if appropriate. Terry, thank you very much. I know that